the Eel River, both the South Fork and the Main are at record low water flows. You can see the river getting thinner daily, retreating into the gravel. According to the United States Geologic Survey flow gauge at Scotia, the Main Eel River was running at just 28 cubic feet per second, which is tied for the lowest average daily flow for the same date in 1924. The National Weather Service isn't predicting any sort of rain really for a month or two. This could mean substantial negative impacts to water quality and aquatic life. The nonprofit Eel River Recovery Project, spearheaded by fisheries biologist Pat Higgins, is documenting the low flows and impacts to native fish every way humanly possible. This Friday, pilots volunteered their time flying cameras over the valley. There's our airplanes. We got the 2007 Sting with 1,500 hours and a 2006 pristine CT flight design with about 300 hours. Oh, 450. 450. Patrick, how many uh, salmon and steelhead might be coming back here uh, this year and, and uh, what are they going to be facing uh, in these drought conditions? The Eel River Recovery Project has actually documented uh, 20 to 50,000 fish in the last couple of years. Their levels equal to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service surveys in the 50s. This is just bullshit. Up. They're doing the river right now, Ridge. August 26th is their historic date of entry, but there isn't enough water for them to run today. And so we're going to survey conditions and see what impediments or migrations might be there once they do start to run with the rains. How historic are, are the, uh, the current uh, drought conditions that we're experiencing here on the Eel River? Well, you know, they say that in the state we're in a 500 year drought, which is extremely rare, but uh, actually there are no records uh, that are of similar low flow from uh, history, uh, from the USGS gauges. Uh, for instance, the lower main eel we'll see today is barely flowing, it's 28 cubic feet per second, but it also flowed at that level in 1924. Is this a harbinger of the future with uh, climate change? I believe it is, Rich. We're supposed to get uh, more intense rainfall and also more prolonged droughts. And there's a second factor. Every 25 years, we get oscillating conditions from wet on land and dry on land, and we're going into that right now. So, over the next 20 years, we can expect to see cycles of drought similar to 76, 77, and 86 through 92. And this is the main stem eel. This is the main eel below the middle fork, below Dos Rios. And uh, what we're looking at is. Uh, there's a little extra water that's been run out of the Potter Valley project for about the last 10 days. So we're looking at about 25 cubic feet per second. And otherwise the flow here a, a week ago was seven or less. And so uh, this river was on the way to dry. So it's good that we're running more water today, but this river is gonna be real, real warm right now too. There's so, an old tunnel. Yeah, a lot of tunnels. This could be the vicinity of Island Mountain. And uh, if that's the Island Mountain Tunnel, it's one of the reasons that this line is defunct because it's uh, the tunnels have also collapsed. Okay, uh, flight design, what's your altitude? Uh, altitude is 2,100. Okay, we're at uh, 1,300, you see us? We passed you about 30 seconds ago. Roger that, good. Well, I'm a little low on fuel. It was a lot farther down there than I thought. We're going to head back and land. Also, the uh, turbulence is starting to come up. So, uh, go as far as you think you can and then uh, bring it back to uh, airport and land. Absolutely. Everything's been fine so far. I've still got 23 gallons of gas. Take your time then. Okay, take your time then. Uh, we'll be on the ground waiting.
Riverville Airport, automated weather observation 1807 Zulu weather, wind 350 at 6 knots, visibility more than 1 zero, temperature 25 Celsius, 2.10 Celsius, altimeter 2 niner niner 8 inches of mercury. Remarks, niner niner 8 the altitude. Six knots of wind. Where in the hell is the airport? Right over that ridge. You're going up the Redwood Creek Valley right now, and you ought to be back in the main south fork. Figured the river takes a big ass. Okay, right. we're gonna land. Okay, shut the cameras down then. Uh, okay. Got it. We'll turn them back on when we get over here. I gotta go in uh, on a right 45 for runway 36. Right, That's so Sproul over there, the with Important Creek. The That's a cold water one. Yourself. I'm Rich Dehaven, a uh, retired U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologist. And you were the pilot of this craft. Tell us a little bit about the airplane and what your mission in this case was. Okay, this is a light sport airplane. It's a, it's a small version of a big airplane that carries two people. Very fuel efficient and it's very nice for flying down tight quarters like the Eel River drainage. And so we just finished a, um, a survey of uh, a large part of the eel. That is a short the, runway, isn't it? The condition of the river under these uh, prevailing drought conditions. And we're here also with... Pat Higgins, the River Recovery Project Volunteer Coordinator. I'm a friend of Rich's and he actually has uh, many accomplished YouTubes and he's got GoPro cameras strapped to the outside of this aircraft. So in addition to my handheld camera, which I never leaves my side. Oh, we I live to fight another day. <laughs> two on the outside and one in the cockpit. And uh, yeah. the other plane that flew down the south port. And I hope I got enough fuel to get home. Thanks for watching. Browse my other videos at Sting Flight. And subscribe. It's free.